Hello and welcome to Tutorial 69 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language Programming. If you're not part of our email list then please go to markplex.com and I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So in today's tutorial I thought I would cover in some a little bit of detail two-dimensional arrays. I get a fair number of questions about arrays and I think it's something that people find difficult to understand but they're really not all that difficult so what I wanted to do is just show you a really simple example and what we're going to do is just create a two-dimensional array and uh, I've created a similar thing to what we're going to do here in the program just to show you it on the spreadsheet and uh, you can see we've got two columns and we've got nine rows now one thing to bear in mind about TradeStation arrays is they also have a zero column and a zero row uh, but we can or, or it's probably a good practice to not use those because a lot of the built-in TradeStation functions don't use them so by not using them uh, you would uh, you would be consistent with and able to use those built-in TradeStation functions. Uh, also, it makes it maybe a little bit easier to understand if we just think in terms of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, one, two in terms of columns, rather than counting from zero. So let's go ahead and uh, create a show me study. I'm just gonna go file, new, uh, show me, we'll call it underscore tutorial 69 and I'm going to say OK. So first thing we need to do is declare the array. So we're going to do that by just saying, giving it a name. I'm just going to call it tutorial 69. And uh, we're going to put the dimensions in square brackets. So we're going to put two being the number of columns and nine being the number of rows. And we're going to set those initially to zero. So just put zero in the rounded bracket, semicolon to finish the line there. I'm just going to press F3 to verify, make sure we don't have any errors. And so what we've done uh, thus far is effectively created an array that looks in the computer's memory something like this. Now, having created an array, we want to do something useful with it. So what I'm going to do is just set up a little once begin here and it's going to put in we're going to actually be printing some stuff so I'm just going to put clear print log this makes sure that we get a nice clear print log from the program every time we run this and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up tutorial and we're going to choose a column let's choose column one and row five and we're going to put into that the value of close on this particular bar and then secondly, we're going to just randomly choose. In fact, let me just spell that correctly. It should be tutorial 69 there. And uh, I'm just going to copy this just to make it a little quicker. Um, and what we're going to do is just choose another random element in the array. I'm just going to choose the second column and the ninth row. And what we're going to put in there is the time of the particular bar here. So we've now if we go back to our spreadsheet, we've put something in this element here, and we put something when we, at least when we apply this to a, to a chart, we've put something in this ele ele um, element here as well. Okay, so let's just go back to the program. Just uh, incidentally, those that was just random typing, just to try and show you which elements we're putting things in. What we want to now do is is have a little loop to go through and see what's in each element of the array. So we can do this by going for value one equals one to two. Notice I'm not using the zero element. Begin. And then I'm gonna do another little loop. I'm gonna say for value two equals one to nine. Begin. and then inside that I'm going to put in a print statement and what we want to know is the uh, the name of the element and what's in that element so let's just first we'll put in a little bit of uh, text so we'll say uh, print tutorial 69 
square bracket. And this is just a, a string of text so we can see what's going on. Then we're going to put value one here, followed by, let's just put a space in there, value two. In fact, let's put a uh, comma space in there. And then we're just going to put in a close of the square brackets. That's just so that we can, it's more clear to, uh, to show us what's there. And then we're going to put in the actual value itself. So open brackets, square brackets, I'm going to put in here value one and value two. Close square brackets. Close round brackets, semicolon. And then we need to just close all our four. So we need to close the value two equals one to nine loop. And we need to close the value one equals one to two loop using the end. And then finally, we need to close the uh, the once begin end. Okay, so I think we are good. So I'm just press F3 to check that. Um, okay, we've got an unidentified identifier. And that's because I've mistyped, excuse me, tutorial 69. So I'm just gonna press F3 again. And uh, we're good. So what I'm going to now do is apply this to I've just got a little um, Apple chart here, just a day or so's worth of data 15 minutes, so I'm just going to go insert show me find the show me and apply. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we've got in terms of the values. Well, uh, if you recall from the program, what, what we did in the uh, the one statement is we stored something in element uh, column one, row five, column two, row nine. So let's just first of all check there's something in each of those. Well, you can see here that in column two, row nine, there's certainly something and column uh, column one, row five, there's also something. And you'll notice the, uh, the time and the close that we've taken here. The first bar on the chart is actually 6.45. Um, the uh, the bar that we're looking at that this is running on is the seven o'clock and you can see the uh, the close is indeed 40425 and you might be wondering why it's running on this bar rather than this bar and that's because max bars back is equal to one and uh, if you're interested in uh, seeing that you could just put in an additional thing in the print statement here so max bars back and if you recall, max bars back is the uh, the number of bars that uh, TradeStation puts in there before it starts running the program. Um, max bars back. I'm just going to verify that again. And uh, if we look at the program here, you'll see max bars back is equal to one. So uh, there we have a very uh, simple demonstration of the two-dimensional array of course you would use it for something far more interesting than this but just an example of how you could set particular elements and then how you could cycle through the array so that you could see what the array is set up anyway i hope you find that useful again if you're not part of our email list then please go to markplex.com and i will let you know when i create new tutorials or programs thank you very much